Look who's camera shy. Oh. Say what? Say what? <laughs> Say what? <laughs> Say what? I love you too, babe. No, He's a puppy. He's a puppy. She's scared of it. Well, like <laughs> now she ran away from it. <laughs> Our YouTube Saturday, about 9 50, 10 o'clock in the morning. So, uh, me and the wife and my son went to go get some Tim Hortons this morning, and the check engine light came on on my wife's Scion. So, uh, we're going to do a little scanning of that and see what the problem is. I'm hoping it's just a gas cap. That's what it was last time. Uh, I have to say, there is a app called Torque, which is very handy because I have a uh, Bluetooth uh, OBD2 scanner. So it comes in handy when I'm trying to do these things. I don't have to have the old school scanner and just hook this thing in, connect by Bluetooth, and I'm good to go. Now, when I replaced it last time, I went to AutoZone and I got one of the uh, one of the gas caps they have and honestly it's kind of crap it doesn't click right and stuff but it, it i mean hers isn't like one that screws on with threads or anything it's just got two little notches going to slot and then twisting it and it's locked um but i don't like the autozone one it's it's really crap and i want to replace it anyways but let's see what this says all right so it's throwing two codes a 441 and a 455 so this is incorrect purge system flow and uh, leak detected. So uh, the one is saying possibly the gas gas. So let's take a look. Gas yesterday, so it's a good possibility that something is not sealing right on the gas cap. It physically looks fine, so I'll probably just turn it back on, reset it, and see what happens. All right, YouTube. So now that I've gotten a few things done this morning. Uh, I'm just going to slowly get started on this clutch swap. So, uh, so yeah, we're just going to kind of get the, the vehicle positioned and lifted up and everything. But, uh, but yeah, it's kind of a shitty day. It rained yesterday and it's all misty and foggy. Probably going to rain today. Hopefully it warms up and get a little sun. But uh, it is what it is. I'll probably be in the garage all day, so it really doesn't matter. I just hate when I have to shut the garage door while it rains and stuff because then it gets really hot and muggy. Alright YouTube, so I finally got the car jacked up and I finally got my romper on. You know, the only type men should wear because romper. But anyways, so I finally got the car jacked up. Going to uh, get started on this uh, transmission removal clutch swap. Uh, basically, you know, standard, you want to disconnect your negative battery cable to kill power to the vehicle, and then, you know, drive shaft's got to come out, uh, shifter's got to come out, all the electronics, sensors and clips and all that stuff. Um, you know, it's pretty standard with any car, so, you know, yeah, basically I'm just going to start doing stuff, and uh, I'll let you just kind of tag along, and I'll try to move the camera around and see. Uh, I'm sure the lighting's going to suck at sometimes and everything, but I'll try to keep you included. Uh, as we move forward. All right guys. What I'm trying to do now is remove the uh, exhaust Because it looks like the drive shaft is going to be hard to get out with uh, the uh, Kind of like an, it's like an x-pipe So it kind of crosses over if there was a space between the two exhaust pipes I could probably wiggle it out, but there's a heat shield there and everything So it looks like the easiest way is just go ahead and remove the uh, axle back or at least between the cats and the uh, the actual axle back so the mid pipe I'll tell you, the one bad thing about Ohio is the uh, the salt and everything. So, you know, of course, uh, you know, never came off before. It's a bit rusty. So I'm going to have to get me some uh, PB Blaster. These are the times where I wish I kind of had a torch, something to heat the uh, the nuts up and everything, try to break the seas. Uh, one of the things I need to get, but I do not have. So I'll be back.
Now that the exhaust is out of the way, now that the exhaust is out of the way, uh, basically now I'm going to work on pulling the drive shaft. And uh, once the drive shaft's out, then we'll start with uh, the other things like shifter, um, electrical connectors, stuff like that, starter, etc. Stay tuned. We had a casualty. Oh no! Ready to go. All right, so now the drive shaft's out, and I got all the heat shields out and everything. So, uh, let's see. So, yeah. Uh, just to kind of give you an idea here, and I'm not sure exactly how well the lighting is, but I will, uh, I'm going to try to show you what I've done so far. So, uh, back here, uh, these two 13 millimeter exhaust bolts had to come out. They were a bit rusted, but some PB blast, they came right out. Um, let's see, so once the exhaust was removed, there's a couple hangers, and then the axle back, uh, V-bands, those come off. Uh, there's a heat shield here, a heat shield here, uh, and a little exhaust cross member, just kind of like a structural brace here. So that had to be removed, then the heat shield, uh, and then you have your carrier bearing, 17mm, uh, uh, drive shaft 17mm. Uh, once all that's removed, as you just saw, you just uh, drop the rear and wiggle a little bit until it disconnects from the differential, and then just slide it right out of your uh, output shaft. So up here is the shifter, uh, I'll have to look, but I'm pretty sure you just pull this boot down or something and there's a, a nut and bolt you remove from the actual shifter and then everything else is done up top. Uh, moving forward up here there is another suspension uh, brace, which I removed already. Um, so, let's see if I can get some light over here. And it sucks doing this on jack stands. but. Uh, right here is a uh, suspension brace that gets installed that you have to remove so you can get the bolts that face uh, that way. Um, so those that had to come off so I can get those bolts later. And then over here, obviously this is going to have to be removed. Uh, the other electrical sensors coming up here will be removed. Uh, this will be removed. Uh, and then once I get more further... Uh, then I'll have to get to the slave cylinder because it has the uh, the internal slave cylinder. Uh, uh, so uh, I'll have to disconnect the lines from the outside because the rest of it's internal. Uh, I do not like this design, honestly, but I did not want to pay for the price to try to upgrade to the external one and everything. You know, later on down the road it might, but either way. So that just gives you kind of an idea of where I'm at so far. I'm uh, making pretty good progress, to be honest with you. Um... It probably took longer to jack the car up and get it on jack stands than it did to get to this point. But, uh, but yeah, this is why I need a lift, because this shit is getting old. Alright, YouTube, so I'm trying to remove the shifter, and, uh, according to the factory service manual, it says to uh, put a wrench and cloth underneath, a wrench and cloth on the shift knob, and turn. Well, I tried that, and it kind of started fucking up my shift knob. It don't seem like it wants to come off that way. I don't have a replacement, so you know what? I'm just going to have to try to work around it. Alright YouTube, so after fighting with this thing for quite a while, I will say not getting the shift knob off made this extremely difficult. Also, the two bolts back here were extremely difficult to get to, be mainly because I had to have everything still attached. Uh, but, I just got the last bolt off, and I think she should come right out. There she is. Now what I'm going to have to do is uh, figure out for reinstallation what I want to do, because all this coming out at once... It was a pain, and I imagine putting it all back in at once is going to be a pain. All right, so so now that the uh, shifter is out and everything, it's time to move back underneath the car, and uh, we're going to start moving all the electrical wiring and everything, and then the um, some of the bell housing bolts and cross member starter stuff like that. All right, guys. All right, YouTube. So if you look right here, this is the slave cylinder line coming down, going in here, 
uh, to this is the tube that uh, goes to the slave cylinder. So what we got to do here is we got to pull this clip off. Oh, yeah, she's tight. All right, so we get that clip off there, and we take our play wrench here, which looks like it's gonna be a 10 millimeter. Get it on there. See if she cracks loose. Which, like most brake lines, she's on there pretty good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spray some to PB blaster and let it sit for a little bit and then uh, we'll come back well YouTube guess what this thing's kicking my ass a little bit all right so I was making good progress I uh, got underneath you know showing you the uh, slave cylinder line and everything like that I saved it with PB blaster gave it a little bit it came off draining so I was working on the exhaust bracket uh, that ties to the catalytic converters and uh, one of the nuts stripped and was rusted on there so I ended up having to air chisel it off and then recap the stud and everything like that so I can put a new nut on it. And it's taken uh, quite a bit of time, uh, but I got that done and so now I am going to uh, probably go ahead and rip all the wiring off and everything. Uh, I have my uh, camera charging right now because I accidentally left it on while I was working and the battery kind of died. So um, it'll be a little bit before I can get you underneath the car to see some footage, but once I get to a good point I will do an update and show you uh, where I'm at. Uh, it has been about four and a half hours now, um, a little behind schedule, but uh, not too bad. I got uh, the wiring harnessed, and then the starter, and then bell housing bolts, and a trans mount, and it's ready to come out. So, uh, I wanted to have it out by now, but shit happens. So, whatever. Still going strong. So, the goal is to at least have the transmission out today. Uh, right now, it's probably like 3 o'clock or something, so uh, I still have plenty of time. I'm trying not to work all night, trying not to work until 9 o'clock, but uh, I at least want to try to get the transmission out. Alright YouTube, so basically uh, we have the wiring harness disconnected and the starter out, um, clutch line out, pretty much uh, the transmission mount disconnected. Uh, right now I'm working on the bell housing bolts, so I just want to give you a little shot of what everything is all right so here's the wiring harness i wrapped it up over here out of the way uh it attaches here and up here and runs over here comes back here it's a bunch of 10s and 14s uh there's a sensor all the way up here that's a real pain in the ass to get to um not sure if you can see this area but if we come over here it basically plugs in back here and I ended up having to lower the cross member to lower the transmission down to get my hand up in there to unplug it. Uh, and then I just jacked it back up and bolted it back up for now to keep it up there uh, until I get some of these bell housing bolts out. And then I'm ready to more ready to pull it. And I'll put my jack on there and lower it down a little bit and, to get the top bolts. But uh, over here is the two starter bolts. They're 14s. Uh, and one of the wiring harness comes up here and plugs into the starter. Um, this is where the whole clutch line and everything goes up to here. I removed the bracket and the whole metal line and everything there. Um, yeah, so this is basically where I'm at right now. Um, getting to the point of actually, uh, pulling this behemoth. So, so yeah, that's the progress I've made so far. Uh, I think it's going fairly well. Had a couple trouble spots. Uh, right here you can see there's a bolt here and a bolt here and this is the one that gave me problems and I had to actually chisel the nut off and then retap it um, so I could get a new nut on there to put that bracket back on uh, but uh, you know it's kind of very similar to my s13 except there's more heat shields and just a little bit more random shit but uh, pretty much everything has just been very similar to pulling any Nissan transmission uh, it's just learning where everything's at because of the, you know, it being a newer car and a little less space around certain things. But uh, actually, it's besides just the small little problems I've had, it's been fairly simple. Um, I was making really good progress until I just hit that fucked up bolt, excuse me, that damaged bolt, uh, and had to work on that for a good hour or so to get that thing out. But I was able to get it out without damaging or... Um, messing up this stud too bad to where I would have had a problem reattaching this bracket uh, because if I would have 
messed it up that bad to where I would have had to cut it or something, uh, the bracket would have been bolted there, bolted there, and then not bolted here, and it probably would have rattled really bad. And there's a metal ting uh, that bends over here that's really thick. Um, it's probably a quarter inch thick, so it would have been really fun to try to pry that out to get this whole block that in it, that the stud comes through to get it out to try to put a bolt in there um, and a nut. And the problem would have been I would have had to bend it perfectly straight so I could have got a socket on the back of it. So I really was trying to save this uh, so I wouldn't have to deal with that. Uh, so I think it worked out pretty good. Um, you know, obviously I plan on upgrading the catalytic converters eventually. Uh, either with some high flows or something, so I'm not really too worried about it. I just didn't want to deal with the rattle of that bracket not being attached. Uh, but yeah, so that's pretty much the update right now. I'm going uh, to keep pressing forward and uh, try to get this thing out, and then I'll bring you back. So yeah, stay tuned. All right, guys, so success. I got the transmission out. Uh was fairly simple. A uh, little bit of, uh, I don't know contortionist needed I had to, to get the top three bolts I didn't really have the extensions and I didn't really see that being feasible on the ground very easily so honestly I just bear hugged the transmission got both arms up there with a uh, half inch drive and loosen them and they came out easy that's kind of how the same way I do my s13 uh, I've never been one to really use like super long extensions and bring it all the way to the tail and use an impact and, you know I I use an impact and a universal on every other bolt and then I just reach up there and get those two but uh in case you're wondering, the uh, transmission jack uh, performed flawlessly. It uh, it helped me just do this all by myself. Uh, it, I had a little positioning issue, um, but other than that, you know, I just put it on there. I used the chain. I lifted it, wiggled it out of the uh, clutch, and once the input shaft was clear, I just lowered her down and rolled her back a little bit. So uh, it worked just as advertised, which was really nice. So uh, I'm glad. Now installation will be interesting to see how it performs in that aspect because um, there won't be as much mobility I guess as I'm used to when you're doing it with a couple people because uh, you can kind of like hey twist this way twist that way uh, lift here lift there this it's kind of basically lift up and then try to you know get everything aligned and hope it goes in easily uh, you know honestly this sucks uh, I really need a lift uh, I am so tired of rolling around on my back on this creeper in and out underneath this car but uh, I'm getting it done uh, one way or another it's gonna get done because I want to drive my car so I'll uh, give you a little shot here and just show you what we're looking at so there's the transmission on the transmission jack as you can see I just wrapped a chain around it to secure it and uh, yeah she did the job just as she should and then here's everything removed uh, yeah there's the factory clutch uh, judging by just the way it looks on the outside here I'd say there's some good wear on it uh, pretty pretty worn looking I don't know yet I haven't took it off obviously but once I get it off I'll know more about its condition uh, but yeah so that's pretty much it on that end and then over here you can see this is the the slave cylinder uh, it's internal I'm not a big fan of this design but uh, uh, this is alright but it does feel kinda weird at times and I was having a bit of a, a growl on cold starts so I'm pretty sure the bearing is worn out so I mean it's all kinda wearing in timely 100,000 miles um, you know I'm sure it could have got a little longer depending I'm not sure how the previous owner drove the car but I'm pretty happy with 100,000 miles in a high performance car like this on a stock clutch. You can't really expect too much when you're trying to maintain drivability for your customer base and, um, you know, everything. You, you got a high performance car, you need something that grabs, but at the same time, you don't want it to be too aggressive because then you'll shy away your customers. But, uh, but yeah. So, all in all, it's been a successful day. Uh, this is pretty much probably where I'm going to stop. Uh, you know, I've probably put a good six hours in this so far. And, uh, you know, uh, probably going to go. It started to get a little nicer. The sun came out a little bit. It stopped raining. You know, I can't just spend every day, all day in the garage. But, uh, yeah, so I got some good footage for you guys. And uh, hopefully this helped you guys. Uh, I wish I could have done a step-by-step, -step, take this off. It's this size uh, procedure. But, honestly, working by myself and 
trying to just get work done with this one camera and poor lighting it just is not feasible um, I've got some accessories coming hopefully it'll help with um, you know video footage when I'm trying to do stuff like this but as of right now since I'm just starting out I only have this one GoPro and uh, and I just don't have a lot of uh, tools to uh, give you guys some really good footage so I'm doing what I can with what I got like I usually do all right later